people, this is Sandra Toro with KPI Fire and today we're going to do a video on how to calculate the savings from your Lean Six Sigma and continuous improvement projects. Now this is a really, really important topic because first of all, you should be calculating your savings. I talked to lots of companies and I'd say the rate of people that calculate their savings is about 50-50. Now, Tai Chi Ono said, costs don't exist to be calculated, they exist to be reduced. So if one of the founding fathers of Lean thought that tracking your savings and the cost reduction you're getting is important, we should think about doing it, whether we're a Lean or Six Sigma, whatever type of OPEX, continuous improvement work we're doing, we should be calculating the benefit from that. And to be honest with you, this is one of the key failure points for companies doing continuous improvement is they don't track the benefits. And so when it's time for the company to pull back, the first thing to go is the continuous improvement work because they think, oh, we didn't get a lot of value from that or as much as we should have. So I'm gonna save you from that, that despair and that falling off of the cliff by giving you the tools you need to track your savings consistently for all the continuous improvement projects you're doing. So if you remember my video on the big five metrics or KPIs you should be tracking every day, we have safety, quality, throughput, cost, and employee engagement. Now there's other KPIs that are important as well. You may ask me, what about customer satisfaction? Uh, what about on-time delivery? Those are all functions of these big five and th those are important too. But we're gonna hit on these and I'll show you how to calculate the savings for each one. So let's start with safety. According to the National Safety Council, which is a government organization that tracks these things, the cost of an injury is $39 thousand dollars and the cost of a death is 1.1 million dollars so if you look at that as an average if you have something happen at work it's going to cost you a lot of money now I'm sure they did a good job calculating this but you can do it on your own by figuring out how much lost time time to replace an employee time to pay for their uh, health care, right? And the lost productivity that happened when that injury occurred. So, you know, I, I've been in factories where people have gotten injured and there's a lot of downtime that's caused by that and a lot of paperwork that has to be done. So take that into account. If you do a project that reduces your risk of safety by 50% and you average three injuries a year, you can say, well, I saved one and a half injuries and you can multiply that by $39,000 and you get a savings of about $60,000. So $60,000 for a 50% reduction in incidents, that's fantastic. That's real money that you should count. Now it may not count toward the bottom line. Your accountant at your company may disagree and say this isn't a bottom line savings, but it is real. Cost avoidance is real. Sometimes in, in Lean and Six Sigma we call this a soft savings. But cost avoidance is very much a savings for the company and you should track it. So that's how you can track your safety improvements. Okay, let's talk about number two, quality. How do you track the savings associated when you reduce defects, when you reduce the amount of scrap, when you reduce the amount of rework? Well, let's talk about that. First of all, if I'm producing 10 defects every day, and I reduce that by 50%. Now I'm only producing five defects. The first thing I can do is I can track the cost of that unit. So if I'm you know, making a widget and that widget is worth you know, $300, I can now multiply that by five and I get a $1,500 savings per day. And with Lean Six Sigma projects, you're allowed to annualize that. So you can say for the next 12 months, I get to count that savings of $1,500 per day times you know, 250 or however many production days you have a year, right? Now, after that, the savings become the new baseline. So the five defects per day becomes the new baseline. You don't get to count savings anymore. You have to improve upon that. And hopefully you've been doing it all year. Hopefully you've been making those improvements. Now, a lot of people will just use this, but there's actually a much higher cost to the quality problems that you're having. It's not just the defect. You have to add the lost productivity from the people that have to inspect. They have to uh, disposition the part from the area. They have to track it. They have to either rework it or they have to dispose of that. 
all of that costs time and that costs money. So there's a ton of work. Anytime there's a defect in a process, there's a, a ton of work that happens. And you can add up all that work and average the time it takes for each one of those and add that. So this, this five parts at $300 a part is actually probably more like five parts at $600 a part. So it's much more expensive than you think. Now, for those of you that are in healthcare or non-manufacturing processes, you're thinking, well, how does this apply to me? Well, what are the quality metrics in a healthcare environment? What if somebody gets the wrong meds? What is the cost of that? Uh, what if a patient isn't given the care they need and the time they need? What happens to their health and the customer satisfaction? Uh, there's legal implications. Um, not only that, but it affects the employees. When there's a mistake uh, and the lab or radiology doesn't get back to the ED in time, uh, there's a toll it takes on the nursing staff and potential quality impacts from that. All of those can be calculated by figuring out the cost of the mistake done you know, in whichever department it happens. Okay, so that's quality and how to calculate the cost of quality. Okay, let's go to number three. Number three is throughput. Another word for throughput is capacity. So when we're working with companies, a lot of times we'll go in and we'll figure out how to streamline their process so that they can get more done with the same resources. Now again, this is not going to lower your bottom line uh, dollar value on your balance sheet. This isn't going to lower the amount of actual cost because in lean, we never want to lay off employees or uh, cut back as a result of continuous improvement. Instead, we're in the growth cycle where because of our extra capacity, we can bring in more customers, we can produce more with the same headcount and the same equipment. So how do we calculate the savings then? Well, it's simple. If before I could produce 100 units per day or process 100 patients per day, and I increase that, so now I can do 150 units or patients per day. That's a 50% increase. I can calculate my savings or my benefit two ways. One is the revenue or the top line. So remember we have revenue minus cost equals profit. If we look at the revenue side, we can say, well, that's 50 more units at $300 per unit. That's going to be $15,000 of additional revenue that we can get. That's a lot of money. $15,000 a day, wow, that's fantastic. That's real, not savings, but top line revenue growth. Now, the other thing you can do is you can look at the cost side of things and you can say, well, we now can produce, let's say it takes 10 employees. Yes, that's an employee, don't make fun of my art skills, okay. 10 employees can make 100 units, now they can make 150, but we only have demand for 100 units. We haven't filled up that demand yet. That's okay, we can still calculate the savings. The way we do that is we take what we could produce now and we take that and divide it by our total labor cost. So before we were taking ten, uh, uh, the cost of 100 units and dividing it by 10 people and now we're taking 150 units and dividing it by the 10 people. And so our labor cost per unit is going down based on full capacity. Again, we're not gonna overproduce and make all 150 units until we have demand for it, but we can still calculate the savings that way. Now, hopefully your company has a backlog or uh, can produce more or get more customers, in which case that extra capacity is going to be huge for your company and that's well worth tracking the savings on. Okay, let's talk about number four, cost. Cost is broken down into a couple of sub areas. We have the labor costs, we have the material costs, and built into that we also have freight costs, and then of course there's overhead, which is sometimes considered overhead labor like management. It could also be your building and, and other uh, facilities and things like that that go into that. But we're not gonna talk about labor because again, we're never in a lean environment going to punish ourselves by letting people go because we got more efficient. So the labor is really off the books other than labor cost per unit, which we talked about in the throughput section. What we can do is we can calculate material and freight costs. So how do we do that? Well, material cost is easy. We can talk about material on hand. So if we have our total on hand material, we can multiply that by our weighted average cost of capital, which is typically like 18% for companies. So if you have $1 million in revenue, that's gonna cost you about $180,000 
uh, to carry that inventory throughout the year based on your opportunity cost and your weight average cost of capital. Now, that's, uh, if you look at that, that's going to be about $15,000 a month, which is a lot of money. So if you can take that one million, you can cut it down to half a million, that's gonna cut your cost of carrying that inventory down by a proportionate amount, okay? Now, that's one way to calculate that, but there's additional costs. You have to add in the costs that it took for someone to buy or procure that material. You have to take into account the cost it takes for them to store and warehouse that, to receive it, to inspect it. Um, the costs just keep piling up. You know That's why overproduction and inventory is considered by Toyota as the worst or one of the worst ways because it really just consumes so much uh, of our resources to manage it. So that's a great way to calculate how to reduce your material costs. Now, what about your freight costs? So that's an easy one. You should be able to get uh, a general ledger list of all of your freight costs by supplier and you should be able to show if you work on a project in this area what your freight costs were before and what your freight costs were afterwards and you can get that directly from your finance team like they can run a general ledger and just show you exactly what your costs are so the freight cost is actually one of the easiest ones to show a savings on if you're going to do a continuous improvement project in that area so again reducing the material in the warehouse reducing the amount of freight costs both great ideas for projects that you can show real hard savings on that do go directly to the bottom line of the company, which is fantastic. The final one, employee engagement. This is a tricky one. How do you show savings by actually implementing continuous improvement and getting a culture of operational excellence where everyone on your team is engaged in solving problems and being engaged? Is there any money associated with that? Well, there is. What we found is that the average Lean Six Sigma Greenbelt project yields about $20,000 in savings. Some are a lot more. Some yield $100,000, a million dollars in savings. Those aren't uncommon, but this is the average from the clients that we have here at KPI Fire. So if I engage my team and I can increase the number of projects that go up uh, from, let's say I'm doing 20 projects per year and I could increase that to 40 projects per year, I multiply that by the $20,000 and now I've got $800,000 uh, in increased savings to my company. Now you don't want to double dip if you're already counting those savings elsewhere, but it does give you a sense for the opportunity cost of not engaging your team. So one thing I would recommend is use a tool like KPI Fire to track how many projects you're doing and then KPI Fire will actually show you the average savings per project. It'll tell you how much money your projects are worth. You can use that number to say, hey, we want to increase employee engagement and get twice as many projects done this year. And KPI Fire can help you do that. So if you're interested in getting more money out of your Lean Six Sigma team or your employees in general, you can actually call us here at KPI Fire. A lot of people don't know, but we do provide consulting services in addition to our software platform. And we go into companies and we help them save real money. So we did a project last year with a company that saved over a million dollars and we did it in under two months. It's a fantastic result and they brought us in to help evaluate their processes and we were able to identify very quickly how we could save real money in terms of inventory and also have cost avoidance savings by increasing their capacity. So if you're interested in how to do this, please give us a call. We can go much deeper than I've done on this video and show you how to turn your Lean Six Sigma and Continuous Improvement Program team into a money-making team. As my friend Jay Arthur says, there's no use having green belts and black belts. We'd rather have money belts. And I am 100% on board with him. I would love to have more people actually saving their company's money and showing real results. And we'd like to help you do that.